how can we as a nation, not just the government, but businesses and community groups and concerned citizens, how can we all come together to help fathers meet their responsibilities to our families and communities? Father, Father, we don't need to escalate. You see, war is not the answer, for only love can conquer hate. You know, you know the statistics that children who grow up with a fa out of father are five times more likely to live in poverty and commit crime. They're nine times more likely to drop out of school, 20 times more likely to end up in prison. They're more likely to have behavioral problems or run away from home or become teen parents because the father wasn't in the home. The foundations of our community and our country are weaker because of this. all the rocks upon which we build our lives, we are most dependent on the family. The family is that most important foundation. And we are called to recognize and honor how critical every father is to that foundation. I'm Susan Brooks, the director of the Northern California Training Academy. We provide training, research, evaluation, and technical support to the 29 northern counties. Historically, child welfare and human services has provided intervention and services to families, primarily focusing on women and children. What we've learned in the last five to 10 years is the importance of a holistic approach to working with families, which means focusing on fathers as well as the extended families to ensure the safety and permanency of children. This video will show examples of services, interventions, as well as hear stories from fathers about the importance of their role in the lives of their children. Scientists have been studying fathers for an awfully long time. Their interest began in around 1975 when an article was published entitled Fathers, Forgotten Contributors to Child Development. And since that time, researchers have been studying fathers in all sorts of different ways and in all sorts of different contexts. They have observed fathers in the ways that they interact with children naturally at home. They have brought fathers into the lab in order to study parent-child interaction in a more laboratory standard context. They are, have conducted large-scale national surveys of father involvement with their children and how that's changed over time. And as a result of that, we now have a rich and a multifaceted view of the benefits that father involvement has for children of all ages. When we talk about the effects of father involvement on children, it's very important that we understand that we're talking about positive father involvement. We're talking about fathers who are nurturant, who are an ongoing part of a child's life, and who are working in a partnership with a child's mother so that they are effective co-parents working together to help improve the child's life. When we look at father involvement in that way, we realize that an involved father can utterly transform a child's life. In, feed, in, in fact, an involved father can completely transform the whole family environment. 
by bringing in lots of good things. And, and it's the constellation of all these contributions that a highly involved and effective father can provide uh, that help to improve children's outcomes in lots and lots of different ways. We often think about fathers as economic providers. Um, they're certainly much, much more than that. But one of the most important contributions that fathers can make when they're involved in a child's life is simply the economic contribution they make to improving the child's quality of life. Children where fathers are involved in their lives are ones who, who um, are likely to be living in better homes. Um, those homes are in better neighborhoods that support the child's development in lots of ways. Those neighborhoods are associated with better schools that have lots of positive benefits for children, both cognitively and socially. Um, and those homes are equipped with lots of the resources that can stimulate a child's mind and heart. And so fathers as economic providers are not the sole contributions that fathers make, but they're an important part of how an involved father helps to contribute to a child's well-being and contribute to the child's positive development. Fathers are also involved as teachers and as role models. One of the things that positive father involvement does is it helps to stimulate children's minds and provoke their cognitive development. We know as early as infancy that when fathers are, are positively involved in, in the lives of their infants and toddlers, those young children are already showing cognitive benefits from the father's involvement. And those gains for the development of the mind just continue as children get older. We know that, that children achieve more in the primary and secondary grade years when they have involved fathers. We know that they are, they're more motivated to do well at school. They are more likely to have achieve more education. They're, they're likely to complete their schooling. Uh, and actually, they're, they're, they're likely to, to be better performers in school as well. So a father's involvement and the ways in which he can contribute as a teacher and a role model to stimulating academic achievement, cognitive achievement, is one of the more important contributions that fathers can make to a child's development. We also know that fathers are important because of their roles as social partners. That in addition to everything else that fathers bring to a child's life, fathers are, are just fun for kids to be with. And we see the effects of that kind of involvement on the behavior of their children, again, from very early on. Children whose fathers are involved in their lives are more socially adjusted. They get along better with peers. They have stronger social skills. And their emotional well-being is also improved and strengthened uh, as a result of the kind of care and support and, and partnership that fathers can provide. One of the benefits of that, research is showing, is that the children of fathers um, who are involved in their lives, over the course of their development, show fewer behavioral problems. They show fewer of the adjustment difficulties that we find to be more frequent in children whose fathers are absent from their lives. They're less likely to um, be identified for conduct problems or to be uh, referred because of concerns about their depression or their anxiety. Um, they are less likely to be identified um, by juvenile authorities as being problems in the community. Um, and so in many respects, involvement with a father helps to, helps to provide the contributions to a child's life that help them achieve stability, manage themselves well, get along better with others, feel happier with their own lives. And this continues on through adolescence and is manifested in a lot of these positive benefits, but also in the fact that we avoid some of the problems that other children can begin showing in terms of conduct and behavioral and emotional problems later in life. On a positive side, we also know that fathers who are involved have, with their children have children who, in part because of the father's contribution to a child's mental development, uh, the development of their social and emotional skills, the father's contribution to the child's emotional well-being, for all these reasons. Um, these children are also likely to complete their education, and they're likely to go on to, to better jobs, to higher paying jobs, and to be employed. And so in a sense, father involvement is one of those important contributions that helps to, 
set children off on a much, much more positive life trajectory. Fathers have a unique way of parenting compared to mothers. It's important to recognize that both fathers and mothers can be great parents, but they do so in different ways. And some of the characteristics of men's way of parenting can involve a lot of that rough and tumble, exciting, exuberant play that gets kids really aroused and thrilled and just delighted in a very short period of time. Uh, mothers tend to play in a much quieter, um, more evenly paced style of play. And it's one of the reasons why, when fathers are involved, it contributes to a style of play that not only gets kids exciting, excited, but helps children develop the skills of emotion management and self-regulation uh, in a way that is, is, a, is a really important contribution. You know, we often see fathers as well as having authority within the family, as, as being the ones who enforce the rules and, and make sure that people step in line. And, and, and certainly that's often true of the role that men play. Although more and more often these days, both men and women are assuming that role in helping to ensure that children um, are consistent, acting consistently with the expectations that parents have for them. Nevertheless, having a father involved in the family can be important to that by helping to provide children, especially boys, with a role model of a man who acts appropriately, who acts responsibly and with integrity, um, and is also deeply emotionally involved with his children. So fathers may make an especially important contribution to helping to help children be able to act consistently with what is expected of them, and especially for boys because of the role model that fathers provide. It is important for practitioners to seek to engage fathers in the lives of their children. And doing so requires understanding what are some of the barriers to father involvement. One of the things that any practitioner can do is to help find a way of strengthening the connection between the father and the child's mother, recognizing that that co-parenting can be not only an important avenue for the father becoming more involved constructively in the life of his child, but can also improve the benefits of father involvement for children when mothers are supportive, when mothers are on board. There are other gatekeepers to father's involvement. So helping to eliminate some of the obstacles that can exist to fathers being involved, whether it has to do with their opportunities to see the child or their abilities to make the financial contributions that their responsibility requires, that can be important. In, in addition, fathers themselves may be uncertain about the role that they play in their children's lives. Fathers often have the experience of being the peripheral parent, and it can be tremendously valuable for men to help them understand the unique contributions they make to a child's development and the fact that those are contributions that nobody else can make. Um, fathers can be tremendously inspired to contribute to their children's development when they believe they have that kind of contribution to make. Oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys are much too much. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. Beat them. The bust smallest them. moments can have the biggest beat impact beat on a child's life. Let's get a little bit rowdy. R-O-W-D-Y. Take time to be a dad One more today. Time. Oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys... And I remember those days of sitting on the porch and, you know, my dad promising he would show up and, you know, he never came. He was missing in action. And I always, you know, that's why I thank God for uh, cell phones today and, you know, texting and all those other uh, communication devices we have where I can always be 24-7 accessible to my children. Um, my memories of my own father are, are very good. Um, he, uh, you know, some, some of the typical themes are uh, he was very clear that he was trying to be a different kind of father to us than his father was with them. Um, 
and I think that that's something that um, that we see with a lot of fathers that they they may not know what it's supposed to look like, but they they have an idea of what they don't want it to look like. Um, I have some clear memories that um, I, I think it's interesting for me and the um, the things that I do as a father, like that I was gonna coach my kid's soccer team was not a question because that's what my father did. Being a dad really means to me, I would say kind of threefold. One, being involved, you know, being involved in your children's life, you know, not just, you know, being a paycheck or as I always say, being an ATM machine and, you know, just spitting out money, but really being involved in your kid's life, you know, and again, not just spending time on Wall Street, but spending some time on Sesame Street you know, connecting with your kids, you know, going to PTA meetings, you know, uh, you know, going to ball games, you know, really being there for your kids. So one, being involved, uh, two, being responsible. You know, you're working hard, making sure your kids have what they need, you know, not just relying on the mom to provide everything. And then being committed, you know, being there for the long haul. So I would say being involved, being responsible, and being committed. Uh, I'm a social services supervisor for Solano County Child Welfare Services, and I've been working there either as a social worker or a supervisor since 1994, and um, worked in emergency response uh, and in permanency planning, really all aspects of the child welfare system as a worker or supervisor. And um, I think that just over time, one of the things that's kind of emerged was a, a skill in working with fathers, and that when fathers would present in our lobby or show up in the lives of their children, that it became clear to me that they were different than the mothers, and that their engagement with them and working with them successfully was a different piece of work, and then and a valuable piece of work, and then just doing that over and over with fathers and taking it on as an area of expertise of that uh, recognizing that they, they had their own set of challenges when they would come in our door, or try to come in our door, or try to do what they were trying to do, um, and getting better and better at, at meeting that need and doing that piece of engagement. Families outside of the child welfare system where extended family are making it work for families. And, we need to look for the same thing within the child welfare system, and that um, it, you know a, a tree with half of its roots removed is going to be an unhealthy, unstable tree. And that we—I don't understand the concept of not looking at the father's f extended family tree when we're looking for permanence. And um, and sometimes the, the 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 fathers that we don't have ready access or traditionally haven't had ready access to their whole family tree information. Um, it's, it's sometimes because that father's ostracized from a very healthy family tree by his criminality, his drug and alcohol <laughs> abuse, his, his poor choices that he's made, and there's, sometimes there's some very healthy families out there that we can access once we get past that. I think that, that a lot of our fathers come in, they feel very, very humiliated to be there in anyone's presence. And the issues with their, their, um, their um, shame is different with a female and is different with a male. But it's, it's, and it's a big obstacle and something that exists. And to, um, to uh, really figure out some of the pitfalls of what happens with dads when they do try to engage and to try to really um, be proactive to make sure that they don't just come in and engage one time and dump a lot of emotional stuff out when they get to it and then feel embarrassed about that and go away. You know, really dealing very explicitly with what the expectations of them are that are just realistic expectations of come back again. You know, don't drop out on us, just be here I don't know exactly where this is going or what this looks like, but we got to have you to work with. Fathers in the child welfare system, what do I think of them? I think they're highly vulnerable to what I think of them, or they're highly vulnerable to what anybody thinks of them. And that, um, that it's important to understand who the, each of them is and do that, that fair assessment of them, because I think that, that the, uh, that 
fathers in the child welfare system, people have an image of them that they're unemployed, that they have a criminal background, that they have substance abuse problems, and, and those stereotypes don't come out of nowhere, but they don't define every individual person that walks in the door before they've had a chance to distinguish themselves in some way and tell their story. I like to ask dads the question of, tell me about when things were going best for you and your family, and what did that look like? And you'd be stunned at some of the stories that people come up with that involve things like being very present in their child's life and having adequate housing and being well employed and being involved in their child's school program and all those other kinds of things that were when they were functioning better. Dear Dad, these words are being written and spoken because my heart and soul feel broken. I laugh to keep from crying, but I still haven't healed after all of my years of my goofiness and joking. You got me open, hoping this ill feeling will pass, won't last. I wear a mask on my peace or ask for the truth. Truthfully speaking, the truth hurts, but I'm beyond hurting. I'm in pain. When I was a shorty, I thought you left because I wouldn't behave. Later on in life, I found out that it was the cane as well as other things. And with all the scars, it was hard, but I learned to forgive and forgave. I forgave you despite the fights, the tears for all the years lost, wondering if I was loved. Sometimes all I needed was a call and a hug. I mean, I understand that people break up and don't make up and some relationships don't last forever but why weren't we together Ma could have found a new man but why was I gonna find a new dad looking back I wish would have begged me but pleading my case cuz I felt like I didn't matter like I was deleted and erased I would cry still cry so much that I get headaches I try to get you off my mind but I can't get you off of my face I see you every time I see me and I can't do nothing but ask God to bless me because my love was amputated my life was complicated my family became dysfunctional dad I remember I remember when you pushed Ma, she broke her ankle, and I was sitting there thinking, how could you do this to such a beautiful angel? I remember Ma waking us up in the middle of the night saying, shh, Jimmy, put some clothes in the jewels bag. We're going to Grandma's, and if your father come up to your school, don't tell him where we'd be. I remember spending Christmas at Grandma's playing with my stretch arms, so I'm thinking, man, this ain't my house. How does Santa Claus find me? When the little boy in me still wants his daddy badly, I feel like a scared little boy afraid to become a man, but I think I'm ready. I wonder if you know that your baby boy in the show that air for millions of C or HBO and that hard-ass New York crowd that I didn't even know actually came here standing low. I wonder if you know. I know you're proud because I'm going to be the best just like you want to be. Watch and see. And just in case you can't, I'm going to scream it so loud that I shake the clouds and move them out the way of my sunshine because that's what you are, Dad. James Ivy Richardson Sr., do you hear me? You are my sunshine. That's why I forgave you, because my love for you is still the same. And they had gone through a transformation, but it never really changed. So I swear, on my mama and on my name, I'm going to stop this rain, conquer this pain, make sure that you do not die in vain. And when I get to heaven, when I get to heaven, I'm going to jump in your arms. We're going to kick back like when I was little and watch the Bears game. I love you, Dad. So, my name is Sue Lomax, and I supervise all of the family services at CommuniCare. You know, we have a program here called PNDT, which is a prenatal program. <clears throat> I think it's been in existence for 10 or 15 years where um, moms with children are able to come and get into treatment and their children come here. But we haven't had it really any services for men. We have OSARP, which is a treatment program for men and women, and, uh, but nothing specifically for men. Well, the fathers are very into wanting to, wanting to learn the nurturing parenting techniques. Um, a lot of them come and say that there haven't been programs for them and they're interested in learning, but there hasn't been anything out there. So they come in and they're extremely happy to come to parenting. I ask them upon arrival, how do you feel about coming at 5.30 in the evening to parenting? And they're, they're happy and positive about the experience. 
And you can see during group discussions that they're involved, they're focused, and they want to take these um, techniques and put them into their parenting routines at home. Just as, I think it's as subtle as dad's waiting in our lobby and I walk through sometimes and acknowledgement from person to person um, and that the times, I think that having fathers working with fathers is important. I, I, I can't fully explain that, but that's something that I will say that I think that it can be very powerful to have fathers working with fathers. It's something that, that I think that I can offer because I can offer it. And, um, and I, I found that people appreciate it when you do that. And in terms of um, if people aren't explicitly welcomed into the process, they're going to get their messages really clear. And I think that's a lot of what, what we can do is to, is to understand the role and the, the contributions that fathers can make in their children's lives into the whole family crisis situation um, and to be clear of um, our belief that the father can step in and, and be a, a helpful participant in that. I think a lot of times that um, absent fathers are, are perceived as almost a relief. If you don't have to deal with him, we can focus on this, not another set of issues. Um, and some of those fathers really aren't nearly as absent as we believe they are. They just stay on the sidelines because we're not actively pulling them in, but they're still a more significant player in that family system and what actually happens than, than we are. You know, if you are a caseworker, you know, understand the psyche of that father. What does he come to the table with? And then there's also a phrase which says the following. We see things not as they are, but we see things as we are. Meaning that we look at the world through the lens of our personal experiences. And so it allows the caseworker to look through the lens of the personal experience of fathers. Well, what the fathers have told me, you know, one, you know, before you uh, push the paperwork, you know, listen to their needs. You know, find out what's going on in their world. Uh, two, be flexible. Assume, do not assume that the father does not want to be involved in the life of his child. Just because he hasn't been in the picture, ask why. And just because he's a non-resident dad, do not assume that somehow the reason he's not in the picture is because of some type of criminal or, you know, immoral act on his part. What we're finding is a lot of these dads, you know, one, didn't know they had a child, or two, you know, they had some conflict with their child's mother and the mother may have been keeping their child away from the uh, father or he may not have known where his child is or the residence of his child. And so, you know, I think those two things are very critical, you know, making sure that you do not assume that he does not want to be involved. And then also, um, you know, giving the father, you know, some real action oriented steps about what it would take for him to regain custody of his child. So um, Albert and um, his significant other, Shannon, have uh, two children, and um, Albert came to us through supervised visitation, and then he started treatment in OSARP with us also, and Shannon is in PNDT. And um, Albert was great because his visits were with um, Shannon and the infant. It was, I think the baby was maybe oh, I don't know, two or three months old when, when they start visiting. And um, he was pretty raw. He, his uh, fatherly skills were, um, well, he didn't have many, really. He didn't. He had lots of love and lots of caring, but he didn't really know um, parenting techniques and was so open and so willing. And um, he has just done incredible work. I mean, really incredible work. He's a, a happy dad and happy to be a dad and um, wants his child's life to be so much better than his. He, you know, in picking up the baby, he was kind of tentative and feeding. He was attentive to the child, but nervous about it. Um, Shannon was usually here, but then she was not able to be here for, I think, like 40 days. And so that was a lot of visits. And um, we would, I mean, I think the first visit, he cried, the baby cried most of the visit. He was completely rattled. And um, 
We helped him with that, um, got him to settle down, because he had really a lot of wonderful techniques um, that he had um, intuitively, but um, he was just nervous. And so he just relaxed. And um, we helped him, and you know, if we got into a spot that he needed help, we'd help him out, we'd give him suggestions. He is now an old pro. He just shines, he loves being a father. So, I mean, I think that, that had he been where they didn't do coaching, it would have been really hard for him. Because you, you think about supervised visitation, it's, it's odd at best. I mean, you were going and visiting your child in a room where there is a recorder who is writing everything down. And um, instead of doing that, we do write things down, but we um, do a lot of coaching. I remember the first time I visited by myself with my, with my youngest son. He had just gotten his shot, and he was really fussy, really cried almost the whole visit. And I did not know what to do. And uh, Robin just coached me through it, just helped me get him to calm down. It took a long time. It was really, really, really stressful, but it, we got through it. I think the saying was, there's no book on parenting, really. You know, you don't, you, you don't, you're not born with a manual inside your head on knowing what to do. There's certain things that you're just really gonna get frustrated with. So, like the classes help you learn how to deal with the stress of being a parent. You know, how to get in touch with your feelings and your children's feelings. And that was really helpful. The coaching techniques when certain things in you know in your visit you're not sure of what to do. Um, the tips that the supervisors give. That's really helpful because it's, it's an outside help, you know, because if you, if you look frustrated and you don't know what you're, you know, it's not that you don't know what you're doing, you just ran out of all your options, there's extra options given to you. So that's really helpful. The other father is, uh, he went to one of our treatment uh, programs also. The mom is in PNDT. They have two children. Um, a, boy who is about five and um, Edward is just a little over a year old I believe and he has special needs and um, the father also went to parenting Albert went to parenting class also and they were really stars I mean they talked about the difficulty of expressing feelings and emotions to their children. They had a lot of them. They, they want to, you know, be able to talk with their children and have all those things happen. But um, they really didn't know how to do it. And Edward had a lot of difficulty. And through coaching, he has, I mean, he has just blossomed. And um, I think that the coaching really gives the, the fathers and the mothers self-esteem. They now, oh, I can do that. Oh, I did this. Oh, I feel good about that. And um, both of the, the, those fathers have just shined. Most of the clients that come to our class either haven't had these nurturing parenting skills as a child, it hasn't been modeled to them, or they don't know the techniques. So they come in and they go through the book and the discussions, group discussions, and it's like very simple, basic things that they just never thought of, things that they didn't think of using. And the, actually the parenting um, course is good for any parent of any level because it does bring new ideas, things that we, we understand and know as parents but maybe haven't thought of because it, they haven't been introduced to us. Ernesto is a 16-year-old parent that came to the nurturing parenting class. Um, he was actually ordered to come to class and at first didn't have a real excitement about it. Um, but after he attended the first class, he, he showed um, interest and, and was very positive about um, growing in his parenting skills and talked about his child lovingly and nurturingly and, and had all the plans in the world for the child and um, didn't, didn't talk much about his actual childhood but said that he had different plans for his child than from the way he was parented. I was just, just a regular kid, you know. I didn't have nobody to, uh, to depend on me, you know, somebody that I have to be responsible for. I, I didn't really think about 
about it like that, you know? Because once you have a kid, you have a lot of things to do. You got responsibility, you got you got to take care of him, you know, you got to provide for him. And that's what changed me the most, is just him. You know, you're not, you're not doing your own thing no more. Because now you got somebody to watch for, someone to look after, you know? Someone that, someone that depends on you, you know, for further, further on in the future. That's, that's what parenting is like to me. Although he is fun though, you know? Just everything you do with him is just always fun. And now, it's, now that he's a little older, we just try to bring him to the park, take him out more. Cause he's not a newborn no more. He can do more things now as he gets older. So that's what I like about being a parent, just spending time with him. At first, no, I, I didn't want to go. I mean, my pill has been wanting me to go for like, eight months already, eight or nine months, you know? And then once that was over, he he kind of got me into it, you know? Cause he said, I ain't gonna be off probation till I either do something or I'll, they'll just put me back in. So I just said, you know, whatever, just try it, see what it's like. I'd like to learn a few things, you know, about what to do with a kid or whatever. You know, at first I thought they weren't gonna really teach me anything, but first couple days here, that first chapter that I read, it kind of got me interested about it, you know? So then I just kept coming just every day that I had to. And then every day I came here, I just learned something new, something that I kind of knew, but just didn't really try it. And yeah, that's how that went. I did learn a lot though from being in John H. Jones in that program about parenting and basically everything about a kid. Everything she taught me, everything, you know, we study or look into about the chapters in the parenting book. It's, it's, everything just helps, you know? When, if you don't know nothing, if you don't really, not into that parenting stuff, if you read that book, it'll help you out a little bit on the basic things of what a child is, you know, what to do with him, basically. Or how to treat him, how to take care of him. I don't know where I would be today if I didn't have a CPS case. You know, honestly, I don't know what kind of person I would be, what kind of ma father I would be. I mean, I mean, the attention that I give my children, I don't know if they would just be left with my mother. I don't know. But, you know, I do know that they were a lot of help. Yeah, if you're on the path of destruction, you know, towards losing your family, they'll help you get it back together. Because, um, you know, they, like you said, they get you structured back into, like, your family elements. and. They, it's, they kind of push you and force you into pulling yourself together. But once, once you've been doing it for a while, you, you want to do it, you know, because when you first start with the CPS process, it's like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be doing this. You know, I don't, if you're confused about what's going on, you, you don't agree with what they're saying. And then once you surrender to everything and you just go along with the flow, everything starts falling into place a lot better. How can you just, how can we give all these services to women and leave out the men? Um, I think that we're all saying, where are the fathers? Well, why don't we give fathers some services and um, coach them and help them and do all the things that we have done with women to make them better parents. So um, I think that having fathers a part of a, a program just for them that they can talk about how it is to be a dad, to be an absent dad, to be a dad that has to go through the courts, a dad that has to go through, you know, an ex-significant other, all of those kinds of things. Uh, they need help, and um, uh, we're so happy that we can have a program that will do that. The men are not being served in the same way. And uh, our, so our plan was to, or our plan is, to, to uh, create a um, program where the men will have their own gender-specific needs met. Day treatment, <coughs> like, like the women have, 
like a the day P treatment like thing? the PNDT. Yeah, that would have been a mail to cool. where we can have our children and interact with them in treatment too. Yeah, and have cake and little parties and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, because that's what the women get. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, oftentimes we're told, okay, if you just work hard, you know, and be successful, then you've kind of reached the American dream. But what I've seen with a lot of dads, you know, they get the American dream, but if they're not connected with their kids, they experience an internal nightmare. And what I would also say is no, matter, no amount of success, you know, no amount of success in the workplace can compensate for failure at home. everything about being a father, every second, every minute you get to spend with him, you know, just, it's just a lot of fun, it's like someone, it's like you're a, a little own person, version of you, you know, you teach him whatever, and the good thing about it is that he'll learn one thing at a time, but it, ta it takes time for him to learn, you know, just as he gets older, he just, all of a sudden just starts doing something new, you're like, whoa, when, when did you start doing that, you know, it's like, it's, <laughs> the it's precious fun. moments, yeah, the precious moments, those are life. the best, Especially with your son. Yep. Mm -hmm. Kids could be a lot of fun. I never realized that till till I actually had him, and I watched him grow up and get older as he starts to move himself around. You know, um, like lay down in his stomach. <laughs> yeah. yeah man. When they develop their own personality. Yeah. That's yeah. that's the best thing about it when they get to that age. You know. And then they bring out another side of your own personality oh. that you didn't know. Yeah, they do.